Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about winter gear. You like that one? <laughs> Ashley got me this one for Christmas. I kind of have a thing for, for funny winter hats, so she's just, she's just helping feed that addiction. If you didn't hear, Ashley and I actually got engaged, so I posted that over on Instagram, so that's excited about that, obviously. So that happened uh, over the Christmas time. Uh, and as we're in the Christmas time and we have a lot of snow and whatnot, I figured I would do a video on winter kit, winter gear, uh, and just kind of some winter driving tips. That kind of, that subject matter is what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So sorry, as usual, if I do a little sniffling, it is a balmy uh, 27 degrees out. So I'm gonna be talking about first and foremost, some things you can do to prepare for driving in the winter. Uh, that doesn't necessarily involve gear, so it's free, but uh, what I'll talk about could probably save you about, you know, probably from about 80% of the problems you could face when you're driving. Uh, and the other 20%, all of the other stuff can help with. So the first thing is to check your weather forecast. Now I think probably in, for people that live in inclement weather for people that have four seasons. It's probably more of a natural part of their routine. I, if you guys are subscribed to me, I already know this, but I live in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Uh, I say that, I remind you, because like 70% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So either quit being lazy and get subscribed or you're new here. And in that case, I do live in a climate <laughs> that sees some snow. Uh, so I actually just got done snow blowing my driveway, cleared it off so I could pull my truck out and do this video out here. Out in the wintry snow. So check your forecast. This is important because you wanna know what's coming, right? You wanna know if there's gonna be two feet of snow in the evening and you could make the trip in the morning, then make that trip in the morning before the evening snow happens. Or if you know it's gonna snow two feet over the next couple of days, just plan to bunker down at home and sit tight and ride out the storm so you don't have to go out in the stormy weather. That's kind of <laughs> the easiest way to avoid getting into trouble out on some snowy roads. The next few things are just kind of preventative measures that you can take. So you can make sure that your battery is good because cold weather kills batteries a lot. So if your battery is already going out, then you know it might not be there to start you when you need to start your car again. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. These jump starters are really good for that, but check your battery. In addition to that, check your batteries on your jump starters, on your flashlights, on your headlamps, all that kind of stuff because again, Batteries don't like cold weather, so it's best to keep them charged up if you wanna charge them at the beginning of the season and then check again like every month or something. That's, that's a really good, good thing to do. And then it's a good idea to keep your cell phone topped off. If you're gonna be driving somewhere through some winter craziness, uh, just have your cell phone charged up because if you go off the road or if something happens, you need to make a phone call or you barely have service, or you need to walk until you have service, you wanna make sure that you have uh, a full charge on your cell phone if you can. And again, way to charge it, which I'll talk about here in the future. Uh, then check if your tires are in good condition. If you have bald tires, they're obviously not gonna do as good in the snow and the ice as some fresh tires with some tread on them. Uh, even better yet, get some winter or snow tires or at least some all-terrain, all-season tires that have the snowflake rating. Uh, those will typically do a little bit better in the snow. So then the next thing we'll talk about a little bit are your vehicle has some fluids in them. Uh, obviously, <laughs> preventive maintenance, make sure all your fluids are good, but gasoline or diesel, depending on what you drive, obviously, make sure you have at least a half a tank of gas. I kind of do that as a general rule of thumb all year round, but it's especially important in the winter when you may be stuck in a crazy traffic, you may go off the road, roads may be closed, you may have to take a different route because of that. It's always good to have more fuel in your vehicle than you need. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna be going through some very dicey places, then it wouldn't hurt to top off off before that as well uh, because the one other thing that your car has if you have fuel is a built-in heater so if you get stranded somewhere at least you have some heat the more tank the more fuel you have in your vehicle the more heat you'll be able to have the second very important fluid is washer fluid uh, now washer fluid is important when you're driving in the actual snow and ice especially if you're in a state that they use sand or salt or magnesium chloride or whatever 
as the vehicles around you are shooting that melted ice and sand and salt up on your windshield, you go through a lot of washer fluid. And if you don't have enough washer fluid, you're not gonna be able to see through your windshield because it's gonna get so gunked up. So, so make sure you have washer fluid in your vehicle and we'll get into it in a little bit. I actually keep some extra in my car just in case. Uh, that way I'll be able to help other people or if I just didn't realize I was getting so low, I can fill up some. And then honestly, the big one is just to slow down. If the roads are slick, just drive slower. Increase the distance from the vehicle in front of you. Also, with increased distance from the vehicle in front of you, if you see that they hit a patch of black ice and slide off the road, it will give you more time to react to that. Uh, so that maybe you don't have the same fate as them. So increase following distance and just slow down. Like really, if there's somewhere that you have to go in, in such a hurry when it's snowing or icy out there, then just be prepared to slide off the road because it's gonna happen to you. I live, again, up in the mountains and I when I see people tailgating people on these backcountry roads that are slick and there's black ice everywhere, I'm just like, what an idiot. So just slow down a little bit when you're driving. Okay, so that's probably boring for a lot of you guys. So now we'll get into the gear, right? The gear. But honestly, if you just abide by kind of those handful of things I laid out, you'll stay out of trouble pretty much most of the time. Okay, so one thing I always keep in my vehicles is a get home bag. So I have videos, quite a few videos on my channel about get home bags and the contents that you can keep in them. Uh, I keep them in my vehicles in the summer and in the winter. It's basically a bag that has a bunch of provisions that if you get stranded or something happens or there's crazy traffic or you go off the road, this will allow you kind of like a day pack to, to hike to, to your house or to some area that you're safer at rather than out in the middle of the nowhere. So get home bags, good to have in your vehicles also in the winter. Now some other stuff I keep in my vehicle all year round is a toolkit. I made a whole video dedicated to this tool bag that I keep in my truck. So I'll link to that if I remember. If I don't remember, you can remind me. And I keep a bunch of other gear in my truck kind of all the time. I'm, I'm out off-roading and overlanding and camping and just doing stuff out in the mountains quite a bit. So my vehicle is pretty dialed as far as the preparedness element of it. So I'm not going over everything I have in my truck. I just grabbed a few of the things that are kind of more winter specific. So a good way to do this is grab all of your winter specific kit and throw it in a tub. You guys know I like using bins and tubs or whatever you want to call them. I'm a big fan of these Plano sportsman's trunks, but uh, I use Pelicans for all kinds of stuff and they recently released their cargo line of cases uh, in all kinds of shapes and sizes. So there's a lot of great options out there for cases uh, and I'm gonna be doing kind of review probably on a bunch of different sizes of the Pelican cases moving forward. But I've also been using these Plano tubs for years. They're cheap, they're relatively durable. They have, I, what I like about them is they have a good ratio of interior storage capacity to exterior footprint. So they're not weird shapes and weird edges that eat up a bunch of the storage can storage space inside like the action packers. I don't like them as much because they're much bigger than they need to be. The Planos are really dialed. So I'm just gonna kind of go through some stuff that you can keep in here. Whether you wanna keep this stuff in your vehicle all year round, like some things like these jump starters I keep in the vehicle all year round versus some of this stuff is really just for the winter. So here, jump starters, I have a big old NOCO here. Uh, and then I have, I've tested all kinds of these. I have another one, this one's from Rock Pals. I have an auto wit one in the Land Cruiser that actually uses a super capacitor. So theoretically, even if this battery is drained, the super capacitor can still jump your car, assuming your car battery has a little bit of juice in it. So the auto wit, I'll link to all this stuff down in the video description below. But these are just, they're so much more handy than traditional jumper cables. Uh, and what you'll find, a lot of the stuff in this kit, I end up using to help other people. So I've used these probably on other people's cars in parking lots, like a dozen, a dozen or so times. And I've used it on my own vehicle like twice. So some of this stuff is just good to have for other people. <laughs> then some road flares. This is another one where it's good to have them in your vehicle year round. These are kind of the battery powered ones that have a magnet on them so you can stick them. 
uh, like on the corner and turn them on and they flash and have a little flashlight. If you want to use these or traditional road flares, it's up to you. I really like just the multi kind of functionality of these guys. I also keep this in my car year round, just an orange reflective vest. This is good if you get a flat and need to change it on the side of a highway or something like that, or you're walking on the side of the road because your car broke down, especially at night or in inclement weather to make yourself more visible. Uh, also, you guys have probably seen videos of people that are just wearing vests that can get places easier. Uh, and you're kind of like an authoritative figure if you throw a vest on. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. A lot of people have done tests with them. So I keep orange vest in my vehicle at all times for a lot of, a lot of reasons, but especially in the winter, because in the winter, obviously it gets dark earlier. So more time with lower visibility. So something like this is great to have. Then some boots. Uh, I keep an extra pair of boots in, in most of the vehicles I'm gonna be taking out. Uh, you can throw them in your bin, you can throw them in the back, or if you don't have an extra pair of boots, you just have one pair of boot, just put them, instead of putting them on the, the shoe rack, just put them in the trunk of your vehicle. Uh, and when you need to use them, just get them out of there instead. So that way you always have a pair of nice waterproof boots because if you're running to the store, maybe you have some Vans or some Converse or some flip flops or whatever, that's fine. I typically wear boots as my kind of everyday wear in the winter, especially where I live. But it's good to have an extra really good pair of boots, whether this is an old pair of boots that are really broken in, or this is your one pair of boot, one pair of boots, <laughs> one pair of boots. Keep it in there, especially waterproof, because if you have to walk through any amount of distance in the snow, or if somebody gets off the road and you gotta help them or whatever, having a pair of boots is, is invaluable. And then what I keep inside of my boots is a pair of gaiters. So gaiters are basically a thing that goes over your boot and then goes up on your ankle and it prevents snow from falling into your boots or, or water. Uh, but if you find yourself out in the snow that's deeper than the height of your boot, snow's gonna get in here and then your feet are gonna get wet and you're gonna have a real bad day. So dry feet are great. Gators really help with that. As you can see, you can slam a pair of gators right inside of your boots. Your boots also are a great storage space if you wanna throw some snacks or whatever in there, big fan of snacks, and an extra pair of socks. So I just grab two different pair of boots. I really like these Danner Mountain 600s. I really like the Solomon 4D GTXs, these ones are the kind of the special edition ones, but a good pair of boots, a little bit higher on the ankle is great and keep an extra pair of wool socks in them and some gaiters. Then it's good to have an extra jacket. So I, I have a lot of outerwear and usually I'll you know, wear through an old jacket and then I'll get a new jacket. So I'll usually hang on to that old jacket. This is just a down jacket, toss it in a little bag or whatever so it stays dry and compact and throw it in your bin because you may be just taking a run to the grocery store with a little flannel or something, but you get stranded or stuck somewhere and it gets really cold. It's good to have an extra layer. I also keep a rain jacket in all of my vehicles. So if it's raining or if it's snowing, that's obviously an extra layer, but I like to keep an extra warm layer in my vehicles, uh, especially when it's cold out. So just grab an old jacket that you might have thinking about throwing away or whatever and just throw it in your winter bin. In addition to that, some gloves. Uh, thicker gloves are good. I always keep like mechanics and stuff in my vehicle in the winter. I'll grab a pair of nicer kind of insulated leather gloves. These are just some kind of cheapos from Costco, which were great. Uh, Beyond sent me out a pair of gloves recently. These guys, which are, which are really awesome. So whatever gloves you choose, it's good to have kind of an insulated pair of gloves that you can work with as well. If you're out shoveling your vehicle, and it's stuck and you're doing a lot of stuff and pulling on things, your hands will get really, really cold really quick, especially if you're grabbing tools like a metal shovel that's already cold. Uh, your, your hands will just soak that cold up. So it's nice to have a little insulation. Then what I also keep in my winter kits is a balaclava. So this is a, this is basically, you guys probably know what a balaclava is, but you put it on your head and it also covers your face with a little slit for your eyes. This is good if you have to, for some reason, be in your car for a long time or sleep in your car. Uh, keep your face warm is great. And then I have wrapped up in here just an old pair of snowboard goggles. So if you have to do some walking in the snow, uh, snow is very intense when it's reflecting sunlight, so sunglasses are good. But if it's windier, if it's blizzarding or whatever, uh, goggles are really good. Obviously, you know that if you're a skier or a snowboarder. Uh, in addition to that, I'll usually just 
toss an extra beanie or something in here. Again, a lot of the reason I build kits is not just for myself. Like if I'm going out and it's cold, I'll usually already have a beanie on my head, but maybe Ashley won't, or maybe someone else won't, or maybe I'll come across someone that's just freezing and I need to toss them a beanie for some reason. So a lot of this stuff, I, I like to keep extras as well, even if I'm just going out prepared uh, for whatever trip I'm doing. I still like to have extras in the bin. And then I, this is maybe a little overkill. I'll usually throw an old pair of snowboard pants as well. Kind of same deal as the jacket. If you have an extra pair that's worn out or whatever and you got a new pair, throw your old pair in your winter kit. Uh, because again, if you ski or you snowboard, you spend any amount of time in the snow, sledding, whatever, you know that having a waterproof insulated layer comes in hugely handy. And then I'll keep some spikes as well. These are little spikes that you throw over your boots to give you ice traction. So if you need to be walking on the road that's icy, a bunch of black ice or whatever, no matter how good your boots are, they're not gonna have very good traction. So I like to keep a little pair of micro spikes uh, in my winter kit as well. And then snacky, snacky, snacky. Snackies. I really like these new Millennium Energy Bars. These have like five year shelf life, a ton of calories, like 400 calories in this. They're good in the cold or the heat. Uh, and they're just a good thing to keep in your, your vehicle because they're not really gonna expire. And there's a bunch of calories. And I really like how they, I like how they taste. They're like a really compressed cake bar kind of. And they come in a bunch of different colors. And I also just keep like Costco trail mix on hand quite a bit. So it's good to have a headlamp. Uh, again, gets darker earlier. Sorry, we got some snow coming down actually right now, maybe just from the trees, but headlamp. I keep in my vehicles, all my vehicles all the time, all year round, but especially important in the winter. And then comms again, I keep comms in my vehicles at all times. I'm a licensed ham operator. A uh, ham radio or even like a CB potentially could be a lifesaver if you're off the road and you don't have any reception and you're stranded or you're trapped. You can, especially if you're a ham operator, uh, and you can use hams in an emergency without being licensed. I'm not gonna go into it, but it's not illegal to use a ham radio if it's an emergency. Uh, so it's good to have this and know like a local repeater because something like this doesn't have a ton of range, but if you go to a repeater frequency, you can tell them, you know, I'm, I'm off the road, whatever. Typically on repeaters, people will be listening in. There's a lot of ham nerds out there that just listen to those things or have them on in the background all the time. So something like a ham radio can literally save your life. Then I'll keep some extra washer fluid. You can just keep the whole gallon jug or whatever. This is an old smart water bottle. I put marker up here, washer fluid. It's purple. It's the really cold weather stuff. It's the good stuff. If you're in really cold weather stuff, normal washer fluid will freeze. So make sure that you get cold weather stuff, the stuff that's good down to like negative 20 or negative 30 Fahrenheit because it'll get cold in your vehicle and you'll want the stuff, especially if it has some like ice melting properties in there as well. So I put it in the smart, this is like the one liter, I think the, yeah, the one liter bottle because it fits perfectly in the sportsman's trunks. And I also just keep water in my vehicles all the time, but no difference in my winter kit, uh, water. You need water to survive. Sorry, this video is getting a little annoying. This little road behind my house, which is just a random little mountain road, seems to get like highway levels of traffic every time I try to film a video. And also every dog on the mountain decides it's a good time to start barking. Uh, so some other stuff, there's a little ice scraper, snow brush. If, you, if you're in the, if you're in a snowy environment, you probably already have one of these in your car, obviously, but good to have. You don't wanna drive around with a bunch of snow on your roof because that blows off and causes visibility issues for other people. So I always take that extra couple of minutes and just sweep your whole car off of snow. Obviously ice scrapers come in handy if you have ice on your windshield. So this is kind of a no duh item, but you know, thought I would mention it. So now I'm gonna get into some recovery gear. If you have a winch that's very, very great. Winches come in handy all the time. I winch people out of the snow probably once a year. Uh, I'm gonna get into some recovery gear that you can, it's both good to have for yourself so somebody else could pull you out, but also to have because you might wanna pull somebody else out. So I'll get into recovery in just a bit, but I'm gonna talk about kind of some re related recovery gear. So shovels, obviously there's a lot of cool kinds of shovels. DMOS has these kind of folding flexible shovels. I have a bunch of their stuff. They're pretty expensive though. So you don't need one of these necessarily, but if you have, if you want the compactness, uh, which kind of extends out to full side of something like this, they're cool options to, 
to be aware of. But you could also have just a little shovel like this. This is a little $20 shovel. I spray painted it uh, FDE. I put it on my uh, one of my Land Cruisers a while back, but you know, it comes in standard red. But if you wanna spice it up a little bit, uh, you can spray paint it. I honestly usually spray paint my tools orange because especially a shovel or something that's stuck in the snow, you wanna be able to see it. So orange would really be my recommendation. But then in the winter, I'll usually put one of these flat shovels in. They're just better at handling more snow at a time. They're better for, for shoveling snow all around. So usually I'll have a pointed tip in my rig in the summer for mud and dirt and whatever, but then in the winter, I'll usually put one of these in. Then you know by now probably, I'm a big fan of axes and hatchets and stuff. So if you have a little vehicle or not much room, you could throw just one of these little Fiskars hatchets in there. It's good to have if you just need to clear a little bit of brush. I mean, you could clear a big tree with it. It would take a lot of work and you'd be very warm at the end of it. Uh, but there's all kinds of things. Uh, if you get into like a little fender bender and you got some metal sticking out and you need to like hammer it back into place or if you need to get into somebody's car that's trapped, you can use a device like this. So it has more uses than just chopping wood, obviously. I like the bigger Fiskars. This, like I mentioned earlier, is spray painted orange, actually. This comes in all black, but again, I like to spray paint a lot of my tools that could be left out and missed orange. So this is the 28 inch Fiskars chopping. So if you have room for it, this is an ax that will actually be able to do some more serious work. And then again, depending on where you live, if you're in an environment or a road where you could have some downed trees, typically what happens in the winter, there are storms, there's wind, there's snow. The snow load accumulates on the branches and the leaves or pine needles really in the winter and that makes trees more prone to fall. So there's more trees that fall over the road in the winter. So if you need to clear trees, if you're in an environment or an area where you could potentially have trees, you might want to invest in one of these big boy saws. So this is a silky, this is actually the, what is it? Is it the big boy, the katana? This is the silky katana boy. So this will go through a very big tree. I have, I like a bunch of silky saws. This is the biggest one I have. The bigger the saw, the better, honestly, if you have room for it. A small saw will be able to make work of, you know, whatever size diameter trunk that the, the blade can handle. But a bigger saw can take care of small stuff faster and can take care of bigger stuff as well. So I'd always opt for a bigger saw if you can, if you can afford it and you have the room. So then we'll talk about Max Tracks in a second, but there's these other devices and I've honestly never used them. I keep this in my car, my little commuter car, uh, cause it doesn't really have room for Max Tracks. These are devices that you basically strap around your tire and it gives a big like paddle. So you strap them around and you, you loop them through your wheel, your rim, your spokes, and it gives like one big paddle. So I've seen videos of these things work very effectively, mixed reviews, but I figured I would buy them and throw them in just in case. It's not something you wanna drive uh, a long distance in, but if you're in the snow, it'll give you kind of a paddle to get out of it. Uh, the best thing to do is these things called Max Tracks. So Max Tracks are really popular in off-road wor world. They're traction boards, but I use them in the snow more than any other time. So they're good for the mud, they're good for some rocks, they're good for sand, but they're also really good for snow. So what you do is basically, when your tires are slipping and they don't have traction in the snow, you grab these, the more the better. If you have four, awesome. Two usually does the job, but you slam this under your tire. And then so your tire grips onto the board, the board acts like a tread basically on the snow and it'll get you up and out typically. Sometimes you'll need to do a few of these in a row to get out depending on how bad you're stuck. The Max Tracks, very helpful in the winter. Oh, more often than not, when I'm getting people unstuck in the winter, I use the Max Tracks because they're quick and they're easy. And sometimes you can't get your vehicle in a position to pull them out very easily, but you can bring these, carry them over and get them out with them. And then recovery gear. I keep recovery gear in these bags. A lot of times these bags are from Atlas 46. They're actually uh, bags that you toss over like a winch line or a snatch strap or something and it weights the line down. Uh, I've talked about doing a recovery video at some point in the future where I just talk recovery, like actual vehicle recovery. Uh, this is not that video, but I'm gonna talk about some recovery pieces. This is just actually a cheap one. I have some nicer ones from Factor 55 and stuff, but I think they're in the, I think they're in my Land Cruiser. So this is just what I have to demonstrate. This is a soft shackle. So there are soft shackles and then there are uh, the more traditional kind of shackle 
clevis, whatever you want to call it, these guys here. So these are good and they're handy and everyone uses them uh, and they're, they work well, but they're big and they're heavy and they could potentially break. And sometimes you don't have a place that you can hook this on a vehicle. So come the soft shackle, it's a little easier to use honestly and quite a bit safer, but the main advantage, so you hook it like that and it forms, it allows you to hook a toe strap or a snatch strap up to it. So a good thing about using these when you're trying to pull people out, uh, snow is kind of crazy. Depending on the vehicle you're pulling out, it may not have a good attachment point. You need, may need to toss this around a control arm or an axle or something. This works better for that kind of stuff than, than your metal shackles. So they're just kind of more functional, but they do pretty much everything a metal shackle does and more, and they're a little safer. So soft shackles are pretty good, uh, a pretty good investment to have a few of these in the recovery kit. Next we'll talk about, um, you don't want to use a hitch ball. I think it's pretty common now. So if you have a two inch receiver and you have a hitch ball, you know, to, to tow a boat or whatever, you don't want to hook a strap up to it because those things are not intended for those sharp, fast yanks like that. So there's tons of cases where people have tried to recover with the tow balls and those things shot. I mean, there's probably been some that have killed some people, but it's basically this, you know, five pound cannon ball that if you get some good force on it and it shoots, it can cause some serious damage to property or people. Uh, so the proper thing to put in a two inch receiver is one of these guys. So if you're gonna be towing, if you're gonna be pulling somebody out and you're gonna be using your receiver hitch, grab one of these instead of using your hitch ball. And then we have snatch straps versus toe straps. So static, static straps have no give. They have, they're not elastic at all. Uh, so pulling somebody like on a road, just pulling them, a lot of people use toe straps, uh, but getting somebody out of the sand or the snow, you really want to use a strap that has some give, some, some elasticity. Those are called snatch straps. So when you're pulling someone out, there's, there's a few reasons for this. It's not a sudden jolt that just rips a bumper right off easier. And it also multiplies the force. So if you have a stuck car here and then your car goes like this, as your car is going, it's kind of charging this strap as it gets more and more elastic and it kind of helps to slingshot them out almost. I, I don't know that I'm explaining that right for physics, but basically you can get more force out of a snatch, snatch strap and it's, it's safer. Uh, so if you're pulling people out of the snow, a snatch strap is typically the way to go. And while we're talking about that, it's good to know the recovery points on your vehicle, especially if you have like a car that doesn't have tow hooks and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of cars will have these little, you can pop off a little square panel and you can kind of screw in a little like tow hook kind of thing. Those can be used. Um, there's some debate around whether you can use those to tow cars or not. Typically they're used to like strap cars down and stuff, but for the most part you can pull someone out of the snow with those, it'll be safer than like hooking it up to, to their axle or something, but do a little research. Sometimes you can add a hook onto your car, add a tow point onto your car or something like that, uh, because some vehicles just don't have good places to hook a tow strap up to. So it's good to know your own vehicle um, and then you know your, your wife or your girlfriend's vehicle or whatever. And if you have like a car that's a commuter, know where you can potentially hook up on that vehicle as well. Hey, sorry for this quick interjection. There were a few things that I missed that I totally just kind of spaced on. One is tire chains. Obviously, if you're in some serious snow and some serious weather, tire chains are gonna get you where you need to go, unlike anything else you can do. Uh, it's very rare that if you have snow tires and or four wheel drive that you will be required to put on chains, but it does happen from time to time. So especially if you're going on trips through mountain passes and stuff like that, Always a good idea to throw a set of tire chains. Uh, Piwag is, a, I don't actually know how to say it, Piwag, I'll link them down below, is a Colorado tire chain company that makes really great tires, so give them a look if you're looking for them. And then another little recovery trick, which I've honestly never used because I always have like appropriate gear, but is kitty litter. Uh, you'll read it all over forums and all over YouTube. If you throw down some kitty litter 
Apparently it gives you a ton of traction. Again, never honestly tried it myself, but I think there's a lot of information out there how it works. So you throw it in, you could, I mean, you could have a kitty litter bag or you could throw it in some gallon Ziplocs or in a little tub or something like that. So what I also like to do, and a lot of times just have in my vehicles is a sleeping bag. So again, chances are you're not gonna be sleeping in your vehicle, but if you're off the road or just a road gets shut down and everyone is just stuck there for hours and hours and hours on end and you don't have enough gas or whatever, you might wanna have a sleeping bag or wool blankets are very common as well. And that way you'll be able to bundle up and stay warm in your vehicle. A wool blanket can also be used for ground cover. If you need to get on the ground on your knees and put on your snow chains or diagnose some other issue. What I like to keep is a tarp in all of my vehicles pretty much all the time. So you can throw them on the ground and do whatever you need to do under the car. Uh, Cause getting your clothes wet when it's freezing out really sucks. What also can be used in kind of a substitute for tarps or like those large three mil contractor bags. So I like to keep those around as well, picking up trash, which you guys know I love to do. Uh, but you can also use it as ground cover. You could use it as a poncho. Uh, so those contractor bags come in handy a lot, especially in the winter. And then medical gear, I didn't even mention it because I just keep IFAX everywhere, individual first aid kits, but medical as is as important or more so in the winter as it is in the summer. Uh, and then what I didn't talk about is fire starting gear. So I keep fire starting gear in all my vehicles anyway, but I think it's like people always talk about it in winter gear, but seriously, you're not, you're there's a very low chance that you're gonna go out and start a fire in snow-covered wilderness. It can be done, it takes some skill, and unless you have a bunch of fire starting gear, it's like pretty tough, and you're better off staying warm, bundled up in your car than you are going off into the woods and trying to make a fire to stay warm. Again, obviously it can be done, but it's not like novice lev level stuff. So typically you're gonna to wanna to stay in your vehicle uh, until you get rescued or somebody comes and pulls you out or until the weather clears up enough for you to kind of hike somewhere. But fire starting gear, definitely worth having, but don't think that with a Bic lighter, you're gonna be able to go out into the snow and start a fire, so. Cool guys, well that was a, that was a pretty long video probably, but hopefully it was helpful. Uh, again, you know, if you live in Hawaii or California or Arizona or whatever, wherever it doesn't actually have uh, winter, then, you know, not, not a lot of this stuff applies. So I know a lot of you guys, even when you're living in those places, kind of like watching these videos just, just to know. So if you don't, you know, if you live in SoCal, but you're going up, up to Mammoth or whatever for a weekend, it's going to snow a bunch. This is, this is good to keep in your car, throw in your car for, for that one trip, even if it's not a normal part of your routine. But yeah, like I said, the first things I talk about in the video where it's just taking preparations with your with your vehicle and how you drive, that'll that'll save <laughs> save you most of the time. So pay attention to that. Again, I'll link to as much of this stuff down in the video description as I can. If I miss something, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll try and get it added. And as always, uh, you can go to www.llod.us slash coupons. I have a bunch of links and a bunch of stuff there. A lot of it is relevant to this video. I have a bunch of brand partners and stuff that give me coupon codes. So if you want to save a few bucks, always worth checking that, that out before you're thinking about buying anything. I think that's it. A uh, quick little life update of sorts. Uh, you know, leave a thumbs up and get subscribed if you're not already. Seriously, though, get subscribed. Sign into your account if you're logged in as anonymous or whatever and get subscribed. Just do it. For those of you that are already subscribed and care. Um, so Atreyu got his second TPLO surgery. So he got a surgery a while back, his first one on his left leg, and then his right leg started going out. So I got the TPLO surgery for him on his right leg. So that means he's basically immobile for a while. So I'll probably try and do some camping, but I can't bring him for a bit. So that'll either be without Ashley, she'll stay home and take care of Atreyu or, you know, we'll figure it out. So sorry, I haven't been camping in a bit, but just lots been going on in my life there. And then the Toyota video, the third of the series of the Toyota Tacoma Moab trip, uh, they decided to delay that for a bit after the holiday season. So I'm not sure exactly the post date for that, but it's coming up. We didn't forget about it or anything. We just decided to uh, delay it till till after the holidays. A lot of fun, very, very, very cool, exciting stuff coming up. So this winter and through the summer and fall, I, there's 
you're going to want to get subscribed because I got a lot of cool stuff. So stay tuned for that. And then, yeah, until next time, guys, take care.